children, you are all welcome to Sunday School. I hope you had a nice week. We thank God for that. Shall we pray, children? In Jesus' name, Heavenly Father, King of Glory, we thank you. We thank you for another opportunity to be in your presence today. Accept our thanks and praises. We thank you, O Lord, for seeing us through the week. Accept our thanks and praises. Heavenly Father, King of Glory, we have come today. We have come before you to learn at your feet. Jesus, come and teach us. Help our teachers. Teach the children. Teach our heart, O Lord. Write your word on the fleshy table of our heart. And at the end, O Lord, make us good boys and girls. And bless us mightily. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You are all welcome to primary pass class, children. Our lesson today is Lesson 7C, titled Uncle Matthew's Story. And our memory verse is, If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. John chapter 13, verse 17. Our text is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 31. But we are only going to read verses 23 to 25. Shall we open our Bible to 1 Corinthians, children? 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23. I read 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you that the lord jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread 24 and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me 25 after the same manner also he took the cup when he had stopped saying this cup is the new testament in my blood this do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Thank you, children. Let us close our Bible and listen to the lesson. Children, I want you to look at the pictures up there. What can you see? A wedding picture and a birthday picture. What do you understand by that? It's just to remind us of our wedding and when she celebrated her birthday. A remembrance. That is what those pictures are for. And this brings us to our lesson for today. We want to look at our lesson story about Judith, who asked Uncle Matthew to tell her the story about the special supper uncle matthew had with jesus before he died and uncle matthew told her the story he said jesus took bread give thanks and break it jesus break it take Eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same manner Jesus took the cup and he said, This is my blood of the New Testament. Take, drink and do this 
in remembrance of me as often as you can. And Uncle Matthew told Judith, after eating the bread and drinking the wine, the bread, Jesus said, it is my body. It is the body. It represents the body of Jesus. And the wine represents the blood. Because Jesus died for us on the cross of Calvary. He was beaten and he was nailed to the cross where he shed his blood. But for us to be able to eat the body of Jesus and drink his blood, we must have a clean heart. We must have our sins forgiven. We must be saved from our life of sin. Jesus said we should do it always. He is commanding us to do it. And this is a special and important aspect of our Christian life. Doing the will of God. When you are saved from your life of sin, you will be happy to do the will of God. Judith was happy. He told Uncle Matthew, Mom and Dad said, I will eat with them next time. Just like we do when we go to camp meeting. When we get to camp meeting on Saturday, before coming back home, we do the Lord's Supper. We break the bread and we drink the wine. Because we are saved. And because we are saved, we have to go to God as well and ask God if I can drink it. It is when your heart is clean, you love your neighbor, you love your friends, you don't have any grudges in your heart, then you will eat it. May God please count us worthy. As we'll be going to camp this year, I pray when you pray through to your salvation and you are sure of your salvation, you will be able to eat it by the grace of God. Judith was happy and he told Uncle Matthew, Uncle Matthew, I will be partaking in it this year. And Uncle Matthew too was happy because Judith has been saved from her life of sin. Our statement for today's lesson is let's remember and the activities for today's lesson ages two to five you are going to circle the eating world in the puzzle and ages six to eight you are going to color the dotted space which is the subject of our lesson for today Next week lesson is lesson 7D, titled Jesus Died for Us. And the memory verse is, Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That is the end of our lesson for today. Thank you, children. Have a wonderful Sunday. Bye. See you next week. God bless you. Bye. Good morning, boys and girls. You are all welcome to answer class. Hope you have a lovely week. God bless you. Our lesson this morning is lesson 86, titled A Great Change. Our memory verse is, Thou will keep thee in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. Before we go into our text, I want you to look up and see what I'm about to show you. Here is a polluted water that represents human's mind, a sinful heart. As it is, 
is not useful. The cup is not useful. The only thing that can make it to be useful now is Jesus. Here is a clean water that represents Jesus. For this cup to be useful now, it has to be worked by Jesus. As you can see, Jesus has washed it clean. It's now sparkling. It can be used again. So if our heart is polluted, if our mind is not right with God, Jesus is the only one that can make it right. Our text is taken from Romans chapter 8 verses 5 to 9, Philippians chapter 4 verses 5 to 9. We are just going to read some selected verses from Romans chapter 8 verse 5. I want you to open your Bible wherever you are and read along with me. Romans chapter 8 from verse 5. For they that are after the flesh, do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be it. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 to 8. 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think of these things. I want you to close your Bible now and listen to the lesson. In this quarter, we have been studying a series of lessons that has to do with our physical body. We've studied about the heart, the tongue, the hands, but today we are studying uh, mind. Who knows our mind? Nobody knows it. It is only Jesus that knows our mind, our thoughts. That is the reason why it is very important for us to yield our thoughts, our mind to Jesus. Just like our lesson story, when Therese went for a holiday, that led to a change of heart. He was very fortunate to attend the same church with his uh, uncle. There, he prayed through to salvation. And when he was coming back from his holiday, his uncle and his friend, they bought him a copy of Bible. Terence has never been reading Bible before. But now he started learning how to read the Bible. As he was going through the pages of the Bible, he saw it written in the book of Isaiah that he will keep thee in perfect peace, 
whose mind is stayed on thee. He was very surprised to see that perfect peace was written in the Bible. He was reading further. He had the interest of reading the Bible now. He remembered that his grandpa had told him that he must be very careful now that Jesus has done a wonderful thing in his life. He kept all this in his mind. Once we have surrendered our hearts and minds to Jesus and truly be born again, then our desires, our thoughts will change and will be from sinful act, sinful life to a godly life. As Christians, we must be very careful of the type of book we read and the type of what we read from us, our cell phones. Because the devil can use all these things to lure us from the way of the Lord and lure us into sin. We must not allow the worldly thoughts to dwell in our hearts. We as little ones, we need to have some Bible verses that we love to read. So that we'll be able to read them often. We'll be able to grow in the Lord. The Bible says we should not be carnally minded. What does it mean to be carnally minded? If we think about all the worldly things, all the flashy things, it can even be our, our education. If we take it to be more important than God, then we are carnally minded. But Jesus wants us to be spiritually minded. How do we do that? By reading our Bible often, by praying, by meditating on the Word of God, by allowing God to do everything that has to that we need to do for us. Total reliance on God. How do we meditate on the Word of God? We need to be prayerful all the time. As Christians, all our minds, our thoughts, reflect what is inside us, what is in our heart. It reflects. Therefore, we have to be careful. We have to allow the Word of God to dwell richly in our mind so that whatever that comes out of our mind will be the thoughts that can encourage others we will be able to be good boys and girls. I can assure you that if you yield your mind, your heart unto God, this is how he will make your life to flourish to the extent that you will be a blessing to people around you at school, in the church, even at home. Our key statement is, God is first in my mind. Class activity is, it's the thought that counts. Our thoughts come from our hearts. Just as it has been displayed on the screen, what do you suppose these people are thinking? Our lesson for next week is lesson 87, titled, Dear Diary. And the memory verse is, can two work together except they are agreed? Amos chapter 3 verse 3. That is the end of our lesson. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for primary power lesson. We thank you for answer lesson. We thank you for what you have taught us today. Father, come and help us to be able to be spiritually minded. Come and write your words in our hearts. Make us good boys and girls so that at the end of our life, we'll be able to reign with you in heaven. Thank you for answering our prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you for listening. God bless you. See you next Sunday. Thank you, boys and girls, for joining today's Sunday School. We hope and pray you enjoyed. Have a wonderful week ahead. God bless you. Bye.